Welcome back, Science Gang. This is the first assignment in the CD3, Examine Biodiversity Through the an Analysis of Interaction Among Populations Within Ecosystems section. And this deals with uh, section 1.5, Ecology. So it starts off just kind of going through this handout here, which you can read in more detail. I'll kind of go through it uh, quickly, outlining some of the highlights. Um, so it starts off by referring to pests, such as mosquitoes, uh, bats, wasps, etc. So often humans um, describe these animals as being pests. So the big question is why don't we just simply eliminate them uh, rather just, than just control their numbers. Often we have mosquito spraying in the city to uh, reduce numbers of mosquitoes. Why not just obliterate them? But of course, if you take a look here in the second paragraph, imagine a world without biting flies, mosquitoes, termites, caterpillars, or weeds. At first, it would be appealing to not have mosquitoes stinging you constantly. But, of course, that affects other animals within a food chain or a food web. For example, some fish and amphibians rely on the mosquito larvae for food. The elimination of mosquitoes would have devastating effects on lakes. In addition, adult mosquitoes are an important food source for swallows, robins, and other small birds. So, if we eliminated that, eliminated these so-called pests, it would affect other animals and organisms up the food chain. So some other insects, uh, some other insect pests, pests are needed by plants. Most plants rely on insects for pollination. So that's the, the plant's way of reproducing um, by having a transference of material from one plant to another. And of course, insects help do that. Plants also benefit from insects like wasps to help decompose tissues of dead plants and animals. And then those dead plants and animals decay and those nutrients that those animals and plants have return to the soil and act as fertilizer for plants. So many of the insects we call pests also dig around plants, loosening the soil and allowing more oxygen to get to the root of the plant. So you can see there's a very important job that these so-called pests that we often refer to have. Even garden weeds like crab grass serve an important purpose. Outside the garden, these rapidly growing plants are an important source of food for many animals. Eliminate wild grasses and cattle, sheep, and other grazing mammals would soon be extinct because they would have nothing to eat. The long fibrous root of these hardy, fast growing uh, plants also pump nutrients back to the soil surface where they can be used by more delicate domestic plants. The greatest benefit of these plants might be to their ability to grow along cliffs and other precarious locations. Here they anchor soil preventing erosion. So before jumping into conclusions, we can see that um, everything has a certain job and is, a, is very important in the food chain. And of course organisms interact within ecosystems to better understand living things. Scientists don't use the idea of pests, they simply look at all of the organisms within a natural setting. Ernest, Ernest Heichel, a German biologist, first co coined the word ecology in 1866 to describe the study of how, inter, or how organisms interact with each other. Ecology combines the Greek word oikos, meaning the place where one lives, and logos, meaning the study of. So the study of where one lives is ecology. Interesting. Turn to the next page. Ecological studies can uh, begin at the level of a single organism. Investigations might be designed to determine how the individual interacts with the environment, and how factors in the environment affect its growth, feeding habits, and how it reproduces. Non-living factors or influences on organisms such as sunlight, temperature, and strength and direction of wind. So all of these non-living things that could affect an area are called abiotic. Factors caused by the presence of living things such as predators, prey, other living organisms are called biotic. So try to remember Biotic is like biology, study of living things. So bio, biotic means living. Abiotic means non-living. Organisms do not live in isolation. Organisms usually group with others of the same species. All of the members of the same species living in the same ecosystem or habitat are referred to as a population. So we could have human population, and that would be all of the humans on the planet. So you can see here, I'm. I'm Kind of going through this assignment quickly, highlighting things. You should likely highlight the same things because it'll help you with the hand and assignment over here. Uh, for example, the pike in the lake form a population, just like um, another example of a human population. And of course, since there is more than one type of species in an area, 
uh, there is also more than one population. So the collection of all populations, so all the fish, birds, etc., living in an area would be considered a community of organisms. So it consists of all of the different populations involved. So the community in the lake might include pike, perch, tadpoles, mosquito larvae, and algae, among others. Uh, when studying a community, an ecologist would study how biotic factors affect each population. For example, an ecologist studying a forest community might examine the interaction between different types of plants and animals. So living and living. How do they interact with each other? Ecologists can extend their study beyond the community of organisms to the physical environment, and here's where you can find out abiotic things as well. When they do, they assign, they begin investing ecosystems. An ecosystem includes the community of living things and its physical environment, or the abiotic, non-living things. For example, in studying a forest ecosystem, an, an ecologist would examine how much sunlight reaches the forest floor, so of course that's abiotic, and what effect it has on the plants and animals that live in that ecosystem, or the biotic factors. Ecotones and biodiversity. Ecosystems rarely have sharp boundaries. So for example, a field leading to a forest, it may appear that there's a sharp boundary there, but often there isn't. It's a gradual boundary. Uh, organisms can move back and forth from one ecosystem to another. There's often a gray area between ecosystems where organisms form from both ecosystems interact with each other. These transition areas or ecotones contain species from both the bordering systems, so they often contain greater biodiversity. So diverse, bio, many living things. So many types of species. Greater biodiversity means a great number of different types of species. And if we look at, they uh, refer to this diagram back here. So the, that picture at the bottom of the page, we have a pond, we have a field, and we have this region in between. So it's not a sharp boundary between pond and field. We have this transition area. And as you can see, there's many different types of animals in that transition area. So that is an ecotone, an area between transitions. Ecosystems with greater biodiversity tend to be less fragile. For example, if a predator has to rely on a single species for food, its existence is tied to that survival of that prey. In ecotones and other device areas, there are more species and the predator may have more alternatives of what to eat. If something happens to one thing, there's always other prey that it could consume. So it should come as no surprise that ecotones, by providing alternative food sources, guard against extinction because they provide alternatives um, for food for animals because of a greater biodiversity. Okay, so what I want you to do for this little section, you can just simply title it, one, title it 1 1.5 Ecology, and I want you to do these questions right here, the understanding concepts. So they're, they're fairly straightforward, I think. Number one, in your own words, define ecology. We did that. Uh, two, list four biotic and four abiotic factors in a freshwater system, such as a lake, or a terrestrial ecosystem, such as a forest. And of course, abiotic means non-living, biotic means living. Uh, three, describe how a population differs from a community using your own examples. So the definition is over here. You can use your own examples. Four, describe how an ecosystem differs from a community. Use your own examples. And then number five, predict whether you would find more species in a forest, an open field, or the forest grassland ecotone between the two. Explain your prediction. So we just talked about that a few seconds ago down here. Uh, number six is kind of interesting. It has a little experiment dealing with a one-celled organism. So paramecia. Uh, if we were to monitor as time passes how its population increases, so there must be food in the beaker that it can consume. So if we look at beaker A, uh, species number one, we can see how its population increases. Species number two, or beaker B, so you can see how its population changes with time. And then the interesting part, if you put them together, so population, so species number one did this originally, but with, when it was with species number two, it did this. And of course, species number two had a graph that looked like this, but when it was with species number one, it went choo, choo. So A, B, and C get you to 
um, pose possible questions as to, or some possible solutions as to why that happened. So describe the growth with A, describe the growth with B, then describe together and come up with a reason as to why that happens. Okay? So that is the assignment, those six questions. On the top of your loose leaf, just simply entitle it 1.5 Ecology, and there you have it. See you again.